This video is sponsored by Oneida, which is perfect because it's all about adding more effective dust collection to my bandsaw. I've had this older Jet 14 inch saw for a long time, and I'm guessing many of you have either had or used the same one, just maybe under a different brand name. It's a nice little saw, but it's severely lax in the dust collection department. With my new Oneida system sucking down way more air than I'm used to, all I really need to do is add a 4 inch port to permanently hook up to. The problem is, I can't bring myself to cut a hole in the original metal door. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made an unnecessary walnut door that seals up tighter than the original and dramatically improves the dust collection and overall appearance of this old saw. I started out with a decent piece of walnut, but it wasn't wide enough, so I cut it in half, ripped off its live edge, then glued it together to make one wide panel. In order to get the new door to fit right, I needed to get the sizing from the old door, so I pulled a few screws from the hinge and took it off the bandsaw. Here you can see just how much residual dust is stuck inside that lower cabinet. I set the old door on top of the walnut panel and traced around it. Where the top edge didn't quite touch down, I used a straight edge to fill in the straight line. I used my table saw crosscut sled to cut exactly at that straight line, then used the bandsaw to rough cut the curves. Remember how I took the door off? Well, obviously this isn't the safest way to use a bandsaw, so all of you safety police out there can feel free to frantically tighten me up an earful. But if you look close, I do think this illustrates something about how the dust naturally works with this machine. There doesn't appear to be much new dust piling up inside or on the base. It looks like most of it is getting flung out to the right just after it passes through the table. This tells me that the door actually does a pretty good job of containing most of the dust, and I just need the extractor to pull it all away. To fine tune those curves I just cut, I needed my belt sander which hides underneath one of the flipping panels in my main workbench. The dust collection for this comes from the main line, but when I was setting up the full system a few videos back, I knew I didn't want a fixed pipe hanging over my bench getting in the way of projects and cluttering up camera shots. So using a length of flexible hose, a pulley, and some paracord, I can keep this connection point up and out of the way when I don't need it, then flop it down into position when I want to collect dust from the workbench. With the hose hooked up, I used the belt sander to creep up on my lines and smooth out the door curves. Next, I used a rabbiting bit to create a shoulder on the inside all the way around the panel. You'll notice my dust extraction didn't look very good right here because I started with a throat plate that didn't allow enough airflow past it. After I swapped it for an oversized one, way more of the dust was pulled down and into the cabinet. Based on the notches in the steel door, I also notched out the top corners in my panel. These notches are all about clearance while opening and closing the door, and a little later on I will point out where I foolishly thought I knew better than the manufacturer. So here is a time lapse of me kerf cutting the sides of the door. The process allows the wood to bend so I can match the curve of the panel without having to mess with bent laminations or steam bending. Unfortunately, I set up my phone for this shot to get some killer footage for the social medias, but this led me to forgetting to set up my good camera. Dummy. To attach the sides to the panel, I slathered on a ton of glue. I figured since there are all those voids in the sides, there was no such thing as too much glue. Then starting from one end, I used a combination of clamps and pin nails to lock the pieces together. I kept my CPI, or clamps per inch, as close to one to one as I could, but I just didn't have that many clamps. At the end, I had to add an extra little chunk of material because I miscalculated the length of my board around the curve. Because of all those brittle little fins that this bending process created on the inside of the door, and since I wasn't sure just how well the glue was going to hold around those corners, I decided to pour some epoxy in to help fill the gaps and add some strength. I taped the back side to keep anything from leaking out, then stood the door upright and leaned back slightly. Of course, most of the epoxy was going to pool at the lowest point, but I drizzled as strategically as I could to fill as many voids as possible. You're probably thinking that this is overkill, but you weren't here to tell me that in the moment, so I went ahead and did it anyway. Your only recourse now is to yell at me in the comments way after the fact, but if that helps you feel better, then go nuts. Next, I needed to notch out the edge where the hinge will go, which I did with a handsaw and a very careful pass over the table saw. And now here's where things get tricky. Since this walnut requires a thickness that the steel door did not, I have to center the hinge inside the material. If I was more of a think ahead kind of guy, I would have done this way back before the kerf cut step, but since I'm more of a act and then react kind of guy, I was forced to make this very sketchy maneuver at the table saw.
Okay, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I just ran the door along the fence with the blade set to the right height and easily made just the cut I needed. And since the table saw blade is round, I had to square off the bottom of the channel using a multi-tool. Now, rather than trying to drill holes in the wood that match up to the existing holes in the hinge, I just put the hinge in place and drilled all new holes all the way through. And now to make sure that this is all heading in the right direction and hasn't just been a huge waste of time, I mounted the door to the saw to check the fit. Man, what a relief. With the door in place, I took the latching hardware out so I could put a pencil through the saw and mark the location on the inside of the door. I drilled this hole a little bit later next time I had the door back off the saw. Now, if you look closely here at the top of the door, the bottom wheel comes so close to the top that it would rub on a full thickness board. So I marked the wheel's general location, then sanded a contour into the top strip to create a little extra relief. Once again, I used plenty of glue, then some pin nails and clamps to mount the top to the door body. You can see I cut an angle off that right side, which provides clearance for the blade guard when the door is opened. And if you look really close, you might notice that I glued the piece back into the notch on the top left. You see, when the door was on the saw, I thought I had gained some extra clearance from the guards directly under the table. So I dug that notch out of the burn bin and glued it back in place to help seal the door up tighter. Or so I thought. Dummy. With the door officially complete, I sanded the edges flush with a stationary belt sander, then switched to my surf prep to get everything nice and smooth and ready for finish. One last step was to drill a 4 inch hole to connect the dust collection to. If you've been counting, we're something like 20 steps in at this point, and if I had been willing to drill a hole in the original metal door, we could have just started right here. I used tongue oil for a finish because it looks nice and it matches all my other shop furniture. It's also about the easiest finish there is to get right. You just sort of wipe it on to flood the surface, then give it a count of 10 Karate Kids, then wipe it back off. Wax on, wax off. I drilled some pilot holes for the flange hardware, then put a little silicone on the back of the ring and tightened it down. I reinstalled the hinge and the door latch hardware, then mounted the door to the saw. That's when I discovered my hubris. That little notch wasn't clearance for the blade guides, it was for the trunnion knob. So after re-removing the piece that I had previously removed and reattached, the door was finished. I attached the dust collection hose to the port and secured it with a hose clamp. Then I hit the remote start on my Oneida system to do some function testing. I started by throwing some ultra-fine dust from my palm sander at the openings to see what the airflow looked like. From the top, there was enough suction to pull this falling dust off course and into the cabinet body. And from below, there was enough focused airflow at the points where the dust used to pile up that it could pull dust up and into the cabinet. To really see how this was going to work during operation, I started cutting wavy lines into a thickish piece of oak. With my old setup, this would be enough to look like a mess about halfway through the first cut. Now, there's very, very little dust that is escaping the draft of the extractor. In fact, some of the dust is falling around the outside of the door, then getting sucked back in as it gets near the openings in the bottom. I can confidently say that 100% of the dust that falls inside the door is being collected by the extractor. The only dust it isn't catching appears to be the particles that come through the table and immediately veer off to the side. To combat this, I made this magnetic shroud that sticks to the underside of the table and sends any escaping dust back into the cabinet where it belongs. Well, that about does it for this one, guys. Like I said at the beginning, this video was sponsored by Oneida, and I cannot thank them enough. I had no idea just how much my old dust collector was really lacking until I had this thing set up and running and I've been using it for a few months now. Holy crap, the difference is remarkable. Uh, the old one left piles of sawdust underneath all the tools as I'm using the tools that I ended up having to sweep up, which re-agitated the dust, which made it airborne again. And so there was always a thin layer of dust on stuff and then I'd clean up and put a thin layer of dust back on top of stuff. It was not healthy to breathe all that in over and over again. Now that thin layer of dust is gone, now all the tools are actively extracted as they're making dust. It is a safety thing, it is a efficiency thing to just have the dust handled for me and then take it out every once in a while from that giant drum. So thank you again Oneida. If any of you guys want to check out their stuff, there will be links down in the description. 
There's also links to the tools and materials I used to make the door. And what do you think of the door? I think it just turned out gorgeous. Not only is it efficient and helpful to have dust collection, but it just looks so darn cool. It kind of makes me want to make a top door to match it, but it also kind of feels like time could be better spent on something else. So what do you guys think? Should I make a top door? What do you think of the bottom door? Um, what other questions do you have? Let me know. I'm feeling like I'm rambling at this point, which I tend to do at the ends of these videos. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Come back soon. We'll have more videos coming up. Thanks.